What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Gameplays. Today, we got Sim Game Fridays. That's right. It is Friday. It's time to party with Judge Sim. We are be uh, we're going to be coming up on weeks 11 and 12, right? And uh, it is time to smash. We got our, our wife here who uh, looks really unimpressed with life, our serial killer son, our chronically depressed daughter here, and our cat that doesn't give a shit about us even though we buy it cool toys and stuff like that. We've got a mental health of 55. We got $2,300 in the bank because we're rich. That's right. <laughs> and it is time to party, all right? Let's just jump into this right now. We're not going out. We are, we're going to bed. Week 11, case one. Dude. I don't know what's up with her, but she's been rolled hard and put away wet. Uh, what we got here? There is one digital evidence. Right, let's check, let's check the digital evidence. What we got? Face recognized Jessica Grumbert. Uh, the scene of the incident. What was this in like prison or something like that? They had a fight at the chow hall? <laughs> Come on now. Let's back up off of this. And boom. Let's see, Jessica Grumbert, 33 female. Criminal record, no. Mental health, negative. We, You know the rules. You know the rules, guys. Mental health, negative. That's it. She is a citizen, so <clears throat> we're going to double check something but before we even jump into this. This might not matter. It might not matter. She's got a negative mental health test, so we're going to hop over here to the law. Let's see. All criminals, criminals with a negative mental health test must be sent to treatment without penalty, period. <clears throat> so we're going to read it real quick, but it almost doesn't matter. I'm going to just let you know now. Charges. Insult, beating, home invasion. Jesus. The incident took place in the evening, in the evening at the restaurant belonging to Philip Morrow. The incident calmed down with the intervention of eyewitnesses. And then police were and then the police were called and asked for help. I'm sorry. I can't read. It's early. Jeez. After Philip Morrow filed a complaint, Jessica Grombert was caught and taken into custody. Philip Morrow, Monroe, Monroe. <clears throat> anyway. Forgive me. First of all, I would like to say that I am in the right. I don't quite understand why she attacked me. I was just doing my job at my restaurant. Suddenly she entered my restaurant, screaming my name and started attacking me. Even though I told her to calm down, she continued to punch me. The incident calmed down with the intervention of my customers. Afterwards, I called the police and asked for help. Okay, fair. Jessica says, first of all, I would like to say that I am in the right. The main reason I did this was because the other day I was spending time at home with my new boyfriend. We wanted to order food and we ordered from Philip's Sushi, a restaurant with an average rating. The app said that the order time was 20 to 30 minutes and my friend was in a hurry. They brought our order an hour and a half later, of course, my friend had already left by then. When I sent a message to meet up the next day, he told me that he was not available and I was very angry about the situation. If we had been able to have dinner together in the evening, this would not have happened. That's why I went to the restaurant and attacked the person I met. I just wanted him to stay, but this food situation broke everything. Uh, James broke, eyewitness. I was eating my favorite sushi at the restaurant called Philip Sushi, which is one of my daily routines. Suddenly I saw a woman enter the place screaming. She was swearing and shouting, Philip, Philip! She ran towards Philip, who was also a dear friend of mine, and started attacking him by swearing and punching him. I separated them, and then the woman left the place. Then we notified the police. This woman is clearly mentally ill. It's funny, man. She just, they drew her to look uh, as if she's been riding the crazy train. That's, that's okay. By the way, how are we doing up here? Okay, we're doing good. Let's hear what she has to say. You said you didn't know the owner of the restaurant. They said you entered the restaurant shouting his name. Is that true? No, it isn't, Your Honor. I don't know the owner of the restaurant. I didn't swear or anything. I attacked the first uniformed person I saw because of my anger in the moment. That's all. What? No, dude. We Look. She's just over here socking him and shit. No, dude. All right. Look, we're just going to pass judgment. It's very simple. You need treatment, honey. You need to... It's okay. Nobody, we're not going to deport you. Let's just send for treatment. There you go. 
clearly having issues. Uh, oh boy was good to leave and not call or anything. He just probably avoided that situation. That's okay. All right. All right, so far so good. Family seems happy. We don't need to go out. We got lots of, you know what though? You know what though? We could go out real quick. Could go out real quick and just pick up a beer. Maybe a whiskey, 15%. How much is it? Fine, fine, we'll have one whiskey. One whiskey. We got $2,000 left. Let's, um, how's our mental health doing? Much better now, much better. Let's let's uh, end the day. I feel like we're doing good. Week 11, case two. What do we got here? Matt Geller and Julia Armstrong. What the fuck is this? Sexual videos and photos of Julia Armstrong found on Matt's phone. Okay. Uh, conversation between Julia Armstrong and Matt Geller from her phone. Uh, this is from Love and Julia. So Julia, in Julia's phone, it says... He's Love. Between Julia... On her phone. Okay. So she's referring to him as Love. Julia, how are you? Why do you care? We broke up already. <laughs> no, we didn't break up. I'll block you. Don't write to me again. Block me, and I will share all I have about you. That's not good. That's not good, dude. You're in trouble now. You're in trouble. Let's see. Um, I'll humiliate you. Let's try it if you want. Are you threatening me? No. Question mark. Just a little reminder. Dude, you're a piece of shit, bro. You're a piece of shit, and you're gonna... No, no, we're not... No. No. We're not having it. We're not having... Bailiff, we're not having it. Punch this man in the fucking face. All right, let's see. Let's see the case. I don't need to see the case file. All right. Compensation lawsuit filed by a person named Matt Geller against Ju Why? Why are you... Details. <clears throat> Let's find out. A person named Julia Armstrong, who wanted to break up with her boyfriend, filed a lawsuit saying that her boyfriend did not want to break up with her and threatened to blackmail her. It was stated that their relationship lasted approximately for one year. Um, okay. Matt Geller, the boyfriend, filed a lawsuit against Julia Armstrong for damages worth $50,000 due to her unfair accusations. Julia, when we started a relationship with Matt, who's we? Who did, did we start a relationship with Matt? All right. Everything was great. I thought he was the right person for me. We made a lot of memories in a short time, and since we got along well, we decided to move in together. Our home life was good at first, but after a month, he start, we started fighting constantly. I realized that I didn't know him until we lived in the same house, which is often the case. You really don't know someone unless you've traveled with them, lived with them, and shared finances with them. I always say that. I stand by it. It's true. You can date someone for 10 years, and those three things will change your opinion, not always for the worse, sometimes for the better. But you don't know until you know. You know what I mean? Best to get it out of the way early. I realized that I didn't know him until we lived in the same house. He was very lazy. He would lie down all day without moving a muscle, even when there was dirt everywhere. <laughs> when I told him that we should do things like cleaning and cooking together in our free time, he said he was too tired and just laid down. Uh, however, we were also starting to have money problems. After a while, the most important issue emerged. He kept telling me that we had done everything and that he no longer enjoyed sex and that we should look for different pleasures. I would do anything for him, but it was very difficult to do the things he wanted from me without asking for them myself. Okay. He started to ask questions such as, why don't you do something that I'd like to? You don't love me? We decided to break up after a while, but he did not delete the sexual pictures and videos of me. He told me that he misses me about a week after our separation. He acted like we never broke up. And when I reminded him of that, he threatened to spread the photos and videos he had to all of his friends or my friends and the internet. Matt, I love Julia very much and I think everything is going well. The only problem in our relationship is that she takes some little things too seriously. After I eat in bed, 
she argues with me when she sees that I don't clean the house when it gets dusty. Okay, but such things are not a problem for me and do not require cleaning. If it bothers her, she should clean it herself. We argue when I say these things, but then we continue as if nothing happened. I think there is no problem. We started living together in the middle of our relationship. Naturally, we tried everything we could in bed. When I go to her with different ideas, she always acts offended and rejects them. I just want to discover new pleasures together. Afterwards, she wanted to break up with me. Since I didn't want to lose her, I told her that I love her and also miss her very much. Yeah, none of this matters. You threatened her with like, that's ter you're gross, bro. Why do you still keep photos and videos of your girlfriend even though she asked you to delete them? Yeah, fair question. Because I miss her so much, I miss us, I want us to have things that I can remember. Even if I delete them, they will never make up again. It doesn't matter. You didn't make her happy. Part of being in a relationship is knowing that you're the best person for your partner, not just that your partner is the best person for you. Both of things, both of these things kind of have to be true at the same time. Otherwise, what are you doing? Like, what are you up to? If it doesn't matter if, if you miss her, she doesn't miss you. That's how relationships are. You're not in a relationship with a fucking blow up doll. You, you dickhead. What's wrong with you? Why are you secretly sharing her private photos with your friend? That's a tough question, Your Honor, because you're a smarmy dickhead. That's why. I have some strange feelings and it gives me pleasure sometimes. I trust my friend very much and was, well, I don't even care. I don't, I don't care. I thought that if there were good comments and my girlfriend was ready to try new things, could lead to other things, but now I realize how ridiculous it was to do without her notice. No, no, without her approval. It's not noticing somebody, it's approved. Mm. This is not this is not a hum thing. I don't I don't need to talk to you, my dear. We're just we're just gonna rule in your favor. This guy's a dickhead. Matt Geller to pay fifty thousand in Davin. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're disgusting, you piece of crap. Honestly, he should go to jail. This is some jail shit. Yeah, I'm not getting arrested. We're not having that. No. Boom. All right. We're doing good. I think we made it through the week. Did we not make it through the week? I guess we got one more. What do we got? We got 80 bucks in there. You know what we can do? Let's go to the casino and burn off 80 bucks. Nobody wanted that 80 bucks anyway. 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks. Boom. Dude, why? What is this, man? And I'm out. That was fun. Good way, good way to quickly lose $80. God dang. All right. Let's uh, end the day. Kind of mental health is all right. Let's hit it off. Week 11, case three. Ooh, look at this guy. This guy looks like he's a criminal, dude. I don't know. I think they did that on purpose. All right, so let's start off here. All right, let's take a look at this evidence. Uh, uh oh, it's one of these again with the garrote. Every time we see the garrote and a rose, we know what it is. A licensed semi-automatic, a licensed semi-automatic pistol was found on the person. Okay, that doesn't necessarily mean guilt though. Is there any digital evidence? I just like to know what's cracking ahead of time so we can tell if somebody's lying. So he's positive mental health. He is a citizen. No criminal record. Okay, let's find out. Charge is high treason. Holy shit. All right. James Roderick, who was captured by Prime Minister Matt Drake's guards during their patrol around the property at night, surrendered without difficulty. According to the information provided by the Prime Minister's guards, the police officer was wearing his official uniform and had a gun with the safety on in his hand when he was caught. Wait, he's a cop? Okay. So Jamal Roderick, 
this guy is a cop? According to the information provided by the Prime Minister's guards, the police officer was wearing his official uniform and had a gun with the safety on in his hand when he was caught. Okay. The guards who searched the person found a red rose and a steel choke rope on him. Matt Drake. After everything I've done for the future of our country, why would a sane person try to assassinate me? I can't understand it. I request and request from our justice system, okay, that necessary action be taken quickly. They cannot prevent me from being prime minister with such disgraceful and cowardly actions. I mean, you're the prime minister, bro. I got, I got nothing on that. I can't understand why I was arrested and brought here. I received a phone call from headquarters. I was ordered to put on my uniform and go to the prime minister's house for additional security duty. I did whatever task was given to me. I could never have any intention of assassinating the prime minister. I have endless respect for him and his party. Uh, here's the problem. Uh, every other time that we have seen this happen, the person involved was being set up. The problem is, uh, Jamal Roderick here had a fucking rose on him and a garrote. So this is the assassin's toolkit that we've been shown here. And he has not explained what the fuck was up with this. The gun I don't care about. The gun is, of course, licensed, and that's why it's licensed, because he's a cop. So let's ask him. Let's see what's cracking here. The exact same rose found on the corpse in previous assassinations was found on you. How will you explain this? Your Honor, since you asked me that, I'll tell you. It was my girlfriend's birthday. I didn't have time to buy her a present. While I was on my way to duty, I saw a beautiful rose on the side of the road and put the rose in my inner pocket of my uniform to give it to my girlfriend. I didn't know that this rose was the same species as the rose found in previous murders. It was a big coincidence for me, too. And was the steel garrote, yeah, also a coincidence. I always take it into consideration as possible negative situations as a professional habit. This is just an extra precaution. In your statement, you said that you went on orders from the center. However, it was accepted that there were no such orders from the center. Your Honor, the order I received was not a written order. I don't know. There may have been some confusion. No, dude. You're guilty. You're the first person in this courtroom so far that I think is an actual assassin. Assassino. Let's see here. High treason. Let's see what the law says about high treason. A hundred years in jail or execution. And you're cops. So you don't have any previous... No criminal record. All right. hundred years, right? High treason. hundred years in jail. Yeah, we're putting you up, dude. We're putting you up. Guilty. 100 years. Let me grab my keyboard here. 100. That's a long time, son. Holla at me if you need some money on your books. Boom. Out. Just as you were making your judgment, a man's strange movement caught your eye. Oh! Shit. Judge Artard, what do we got here? As a result of your decisions you made in the case, we decided to raise your salary to $2,500 a week. Dang, yo, that is 10 G a month. That is crazy. Man, our man was assassinated. That's crazy. I guess he ain't gonna be doing time in prison, huh? Wild. Wild shit, man. Man, I hope I got armed guards with me at this uh, ATM. Whew. Another $2,000. Let's go. Let's get this money. Ah, 4G. All right, we're doing all right. Who wants something? I know you guys want something. <laughs> all right, let's start. Uh, let's end the day. Let's start week 12. Breaking news. Police officer loses their life. The police officer was shot and died during the trial in which he was tried as a defendant. The assassin was caught. Oh, does that mean that we get to uh, week 12, case one?
Oh, we're in a new courtroom. We're in a much new courtroom. Let's see how we're doing over here. How we're doing? Why do I have a 35% chance of being assassinated? Wow. Oh, and there's a letter here. Well, let's take care of that first. Let's get rid of this. Yeah, let's do that. Thanks for... Thanks for that. So now we're back to 10%. God dang. Let's see what this says. Your Honor, after the recent events, we have decided to promote you to a more secure place of justice. You will never be subject to such an act again. We convey our wishes to you. Get well soon, Ministry of Justice. What, did they shoot me? Uh, or is this, are they just talking about my mental health? They shot the dude, right? They didn't shoot my ass. Oh, uh, whatever. All right, let's quickly get this dispatched. Because, you know, these things don't hold us back. Um, I'm a little confused here. Go this way. There we go. All right. What's the evidence here? The unlicensed semi-automatic pistol used in the assassination. Uh-huh. Okay, there's that. So this must be the assassin. Ain't digital evidence? Yep, camera records. There's the guy. Alex Martin. All right. That's you? Must be him. All right. <clears throat> Criminal record, yes. Mental health, positive, status, citizen. Okay. Alex Martin. Charges of assassination. Recently, a person named Jamal Roderick was shot four times and killed by Alex Martin during his trial. After shooting, when he was about to commit suicide, he was neutralized by security forces. During the process, he refused to testify. Good. Good. Let's see what's up. Do you insist on continuing not to talk? Why do you commit this murder? Who do you work for? I have nothing to say. I'm an anarchist. Okay. Well, you know what? You know what that means. So the charge is assassination. Let's check this out. Homicide crimes. Assassination. 62 years. Aggravated sentence. 102. Let's double check over here. Criminal record. Yes. Aggravated is 102. All right. Well, that's all quite simple then. reach over and grab my trusty keyboard one zero no oops look at me look at me one son what's happening here one oh two all right you sir you sir can sit in prison for quite some time bye bye now we've taken care of all this we should be good to go all right Continue on, we shall. All right. Mental health is doing all right. We've got, uh, yep, 32. All right. Let's go out because we need, we need some mental health. How much are they, how much are they charging? Fuck. That's a lot. I'm going to take it because I'm trying to get my mental health back up. Let's leave the bar. 27. All right. Let's go out. We're gonna try blackjack one more time. Calm down, calm down. Just gonna bet a hundred dollars. Five. What a travesty, dude. A 14, take card. This is such a bitch. You know I have to hold. You know I have to hold. This is this is not gonna work out well. Yeah, 18. Yeah, no shit. Let's let's do one more. Let's do one more. I'm so annoyed. You know, it seemed like... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna hit. I know this is a wobbler, but I'm gonna hit. Yeah, okay. You know, I... <laughs> earlier when I was playing this, before I was recording it, I was, I was actually doing pretty well when I would gamble occasionally. But man, not today. No, sir. Not today. That's why I don't mess with that shit in real life. Week 12, case 2. Who's this guy? Why has he got one wiggly eye there? See, we're going, we're doing okay over here. Let's check out this. No, there's one digital evidence. All right. Okay. Photo of... 
photo of it, whatever that means, of the killer drawn by eyewitnesses. Hey, they even got his lumpy eye over here. Check that out. Looking like a little, like somebody punched Hitler in the face. What does this say? Oh God, somebody spilled beet juice on this again. We hate to have to warn you. We, do you really? But you must release Albert DeSanta, otherwise your wife and children will suffer for it. If Alberta DeSanta is sent us, be prepared to watch your family disappear. Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, if this was real life, uh, I would be talking to a boy here. But listen, you're not gonna, you're not gonna scare me into, to, you know, defaming justice. And clearly now Albert is guilty, so let's just read through it. Albert DeSanta, 54 male, let's see, criminal record, yes. Positive mental health test, he is a citizen. Okay, charges, murder, of course. We're in a banana republic, what'd you expect? Recently, at noon, three gunshots were heard in the restaurant called Burger Queens. A person named Martin Mandex, Ma Madrex, Madrex, okay, lost his life in the incident. It has been stated that the cameras are not active because the restaurant has just opened. As a result of the consistent or of the co consistent statements of customer Amanda Franks and employee Katia Stans, who were there at the time of the incident, and the photo fit photo of it they drew. Okay, the information of the person named Albert DeSanta was obtained. Not long after, the person named Albert DeSanta was caught and by the police and taken into custody. Fantastic. Katia Stans. I started my shift at noon. Since the restaurant is secluded, I can remember the customers' faces. While I was waiting at the counter, I noticed that the customers at table 14 were arguing. The customer in the leather jacket suddenly pulled out a gun and pointed it at the person in front of him. As soon as I saw the gun, I hid under the safe. Then I heard three gunshots. I didn't show up for a while because I was afraid. When I came out, I saw the man lying on the ground. Then I noticed the police. I went to Burger, Qu this is Amanda, Amanda Franks. I went to Burger Queens around noon to order, but I, I went to the restroom before making it. I stayed for about five minutes. After leaving, we made eye contact with the customers at table 14. While I was heading to the cash register to order, I heard the scream of the cashier. With a sudden reflex, I threw myself under a table. Then I heard three gunshots. After a while, I came out from under the table, and one of the men was on the floor. The other had left the place. Albert DeSanta. I was sleeping at home at the time of the incident, Yana. You gotta believe me. You accused me of shooting a man, but I was at home until the evening hours that day. I only went out for drinks with my friends in the evening. This is a murder they are trying to pin on me. I am not guilty. Well, here's the thing, bro. I would believe you because what we have is circumstantial evidence and a picture that looks like somebody punched Hitler in the face, which really should have happened a lot. So, but this right here, this right here, your friends are the ones that are getting you. So what are you up for? You, nobody cares about your statement. Your statement's bullshit, bro. You are being charged with murder. Let's see what the law has to say about murder. Murder, 14 years, aggravated sentence, 26. Ag is 26. Your ag, okay. 26 it is, my son. 20. Actually, you know what? Hold up. Let's let's hear what he's got to say. Mr. Albert Santa, do you have anything to add? No, Your Honor. I said everything I want to say in my statement. I am not guilty. I don't need to say anything else. Hmm. Yeah, but unfortunately, you are guilty, sir. So once again, it's murder. Double checking this. 26 years. Yep. Okay. Well, let's get you hemmed up, big boy. Twenty-six years. There you go. You're gonna do at least a quarter. Peace out, son. All right, and we're good. Look, my whole fucking family's here. Why don't I just send them off right now? If this was genuinely what was cracking in real life, I would be sending these cats off. Maybe I'll leave this serial killer looking dude at home because if you if you kidnap him It's it's probably you that's in for the problem. So we got 2,500 bucks in the in the bank 
Let's end the day. Time to cows on mental health. 85%, dude, I'm feeling pretty mentally uh, healthy. Let's go. Week 12, case three. Oh, talk about rolled hard, put away wet. Dude, this guy. <laughs> you know those uh, salamis that you buy at the store, the big log salamis? This dude looks like he got hit in the face <laughs> with the big log salami. <laughs> Let's open this up. Oh, man. It's going to be a minute. I'll be right back. All right. Hey, we're back. It was so simple. I'm so quick. <laughs> All right. Uh, fugitive Joseph Gray. He escaped from the hospital. If you see him, notify the authorities. Man, he looked like he escaped from the hospital. Uh, document confirming that Joseph Gray escaped from the mental hospital. All right. Hospital report for Joseph Gray. Patient diagnosis, multiple personality disorder. All right. Uh, Joseph Gray, 53, male, criminal record, no, mental health, negative, he is a citizen. All right, so kidnapping, recently, uh, Ash, Aisha, sorry, Aisha Ellery and the wife of Stuart Ellery notified the police after not hearing from her husband for a long time. As a result of the extensive searches carried out by the police, it was determined that Stuart Ellery left his workplace and headed towards his home. Security cameras on the route of his home were examined, and it was determined that Stuart Ellery was put into the back of a minibus without his consent. Oh, boy, stole a minibus? As a result of the intense work of the police, the person named Joseph Gray, the owner of the minibus in which Stuart Ellery was kidnapped, was caught and taken into custody. If you own a minibus, you're pretty cool. I got to be honest with you. As a result of the searches carried out in the house of Joseph Gray, Stuart Ellery was found unconscious with his hands, feet, and mouth tied in a secret compartment of the house? What the hell? What kind of house are you renting? Were you anyway? In addition, many people were found dead or unconscious in other secret compartments in the house of Joseph Gray. What are you even doing, bruh? All right. First of all, I would like to state that I am definitely not a murderer. I only treat sick people who are on their deathbed. While doing this, I do not ignore their consent. I provide them with the opportunity to continue living. This is an opportunity for them. I'm not crazy. I don't force anyone to do anything. Joseph Gray, you are clearly mentally disabled. Um, I see in your statement that you say you treat people. On what grounds do you base this? Your Honor, I'm a good surgeon. I work in a private hospital in my spare time. I take care of people who can't afford a hospital. I treat people on their deathbeds and I don't get paid for it. Why should that be a crime? Mr. Gray, have you ever been in a mental hospital? No, I haven't. I am very good. I'm a very good veterinarian. I only treat animals. I don't want money from them either. They say I'm very good at my job. Uh, and why do you tie up people that you treat? They... They what, bro? They... They are always causing trouble. I think about their well-being. I understand, Mr. Gray. Do not worry. I will continue... You will continue to treat animals. Thank you, Your Honor. I knew you cared about me. Huh. Yeah, this is this is quite clear. What what what's the charge? Is the charge? I mean, it doesn't matter. He's obviously not going to jail. Kidnapping. We should just have him executed. <laughs> We're not gonna have him executed. How are we doing up here anyway? We're at fifteen percent. Were we always at fifteen percent? Maybe I didn't notice. Anyway, Joseph Gray, sir. You have insared, er, insared, impaired sanity. Time for you to go away, sir. All right, Judge Artard. Whoa, we only got a $100 uh, raise this, this week. I feel like that's kind of low. As a result of your decisions in the case, we decided to raise your salary, $2,600. All right. Let's 
So far, so good. Let's see what kind of cash we get. We've got 2,500 already. Let's withdraw this money. What do we got here? Oh, we gotta take the money first. Boom. All right, all right, we're up. We're doing well. Look at that, our family's still here. What do you know? All right, y'all, we made it through another episode of Judge Sim, only here on Game Blaze. And you're gonna have to tune in next week on Sim Game Friday to see what comes up next, all right? I'm gonna check in with you guys in the next one, y'all. Peace.